Did you know that your iPhone with iOS 26 now comes equipped with three powerful scanners? With this latest release, Apple has introduced a new app called Preview, joining files and notes as a trio of scanning options. In this video, I'll compare these three apps and demonstrate how to use each for scanning, so you can decide which one meets your needs. Preview does much more than the name implies, so while the name is misleading, it's a powerful new app of iOS 26. Like the preview app on your Mac, it's now on your iPhone. It's great for viewing, editing, and annotating those PDFs or images. Our focus today is on scanning documents. So let's review how to do that, starting with the preview app. Open the preview app and select Scan Documents. As a good rule of thumb for all three apps covered today, it's best to scan on a flat surface using contrasting backgrounds and holding your iPhone centered over the middle of the page about 8 inches or so, so you can get the best scan. Take note of the options at the bottom of the screen when you scan. You can modify the flash to either be automatically on, or always on, or always off. You can modify filters for color, grayscale, black and white, or photo. I like the look of grayscale best, but that's just a personal preference. You can choose or change the filter at any time before you save the document. And you can modify the shutter, or you can toggle off or toggle on the shutter so that it's automatic, or you can manually press the camera button for manual scanning. After you scan a page or pages, you have the option to click the image at the bottom left. Then you can choose a page to either retake it or adjust, change the filters like we talked about before, rotate the page, or delete the page. If you have a page that you just want to retake, you don't have to click the delete button. You can just select retake and take a scan of that document again, or that page again, and it replaces the previous scan for that one page. You'll see these editing tools again in the next app that we cover. Please note that these adjustment options are only available to you during your scanning process before you save it. Once you save it, the only option you'll continue to have is the rotate option. So one last adjustment before we save it, click the adjust button and straighten the edges to remove those unwanted background edges. Once you complete that adjustment, click the blue check mark at the top right. That brings you back so you can make any further adjustments. Once you complete your adjustments, then you can save it by clicking the back button at the top left, then click the blue check mark to save this document to your library. From here, we have other options. For example, autofill popped up and can assist us with filling out this form. We'll X out of that for the moment and we'll come back to it. You have an ellipsis at the top right that allows you to rotate left or right. At the bottom, you'll see a number of options, including the markup icon where you can choose various pencils or pens and a color wheel that you can choose any color you like to mark up this document. Also, click the plus sign, and here you have the option to add stickers, add a text box, add your signature, add a shape, or add a magnifying loop. You'll also notice a thumbnail icon that'll give you the opportunity to delete a page in case you accidentally scanned too many pages in your multi-page document. You also have the option to autofill, which highlights any areas of your document that appear to be areas that need something filled in. In this case, in our document, we have a place for a signature. You can click the plus sign and add a signature at this point right here. I'll choose one that I've added before, slide it to the selected area, and then click outside of that. Or you can click the box that's highlighted and fill in a number, and we can fill in the date, and that completes the autofill option. Now you can choose the selection tool, adjust the size of the page, click inside and choose crop, and you can crop away that outside border if you need to. The eye is just for information, to give you information about the specific document that you've saved, the date, the time, etc. The share button gives you various options in this preview app. 
Clicking the Options button, we see that you can export with the current format, HEIC, which is High Efficiency Image Container. This is Apple's default format for images on iPhones or iPads running iOS 11 and greater. JPEG for small files. This is probably best for photos. PDF, which is standard for smaller file sizes. PNG, which is best for graphics. Or TIFF is especially good for archiving higher quality images. Two more options that we haven't covered yet while we're still looking at this scanned document. One is that we have an option of searching within the document to look for particular words located in the document. And you'll notice that when you search for a word, it'll tell you how many occurrences of it, and it will point out that word with a small yellow highlight. You can click that blue check mark beside the search box to close that option out or that feature out. And our last feature that I want to show you in preview in the scanned document, at the top, we have a down arrow where we can lock this document. That gives us the option to password protect. And if that's something that you need, toggle that switch on and enter the passwords twice to confirm and you're good to go. Also, we had the option to duplicate, to move these documents, to rename it, to export, or to airprint. Let's rename this document for the purposes of our test. And then let's click the back button. And now the document is complete and finalized. Here's a quick pro tip for all three apps we're covering today. Long press on the app icon and select Scan for quick access to scan a document. Now let's review scanning with the Files app. For Mac users, think of it as the Finder app for your iPhone. If you like to keep things neatly organized and in folders, then this is the app for you. With the Files app, you can scan by tapping the ellipsis at the top right once you've opened the app. And now this is just like what we did with the preview app. You have the same options with flash, filters, and shutter. And once you've scanned the document, you have the same adjustment tools at the bottom. Since the editing options are basically the same in files that we saw in preview, let's talk a moment about exporting. If you want to export multiple files and you choose the ellipsis at the top right and choose select and select a few documents, when you choose the export button, you'll realize that you don't have the option to change the format. The workaround is to open that document, which will open the document in the preview app. And at that point, you can change the format before you export it. And since it opened the document into the preview app, we have the same markup tools that we previously covered. By the way, both apps give you the option to save directly into iCloud or local storage. For the preview app, to make that selection, go to settings, search for preview, select document storage, and then there you make your selection. Now let's talk about scanning with the Notes app. While the Notes app is very robust, today we're focused on the scanning capabilities of the app. First of all, to start scanning, you can either long press on the Notes icon and choose Scan Document, or you can start composing a new document, select the paper clip, and choose Scan Documents. At this point, you'll see the same options for flash, filters, and shutter. Now go through and make your selections, and once you scan the document, you can still choose to retake, make adjustments, change filters, rotate, all at the bottom, as with the other apps. But when you click the back arrow at the top now, you'll have a yellow check mark. It's following the same color scheme as the Notes app. And now you'll also see a little variation in the menu options. The thumbnail icon is in a different location. And for multiple scanned pages, notice that your pages are listed horizontally versus vertically in the other apps. You can still make your choice to delete a page if needed. Now, if you want to export, you'll get the same options that you had before without the opportunity to export in other formats. Also notice a subtle difference that after you scanned a document in Notes, if the document already has a title at the top, then Notes will use that as a file name or document name. You can still select the dropdown and rename it if you like, and also you have the option to save to files. 
but just know that the share option does not give you the opportunity to change the format for exporting. The workaround is to save it to files, then from files, you open it in preview and export it to another format if you like. You can use the markup tool to add a signature if you like for fillable forms or add a text box to it as the markup tools are basically the same. You also have a paperclip icon at the bottom where you can take photos or videos and add to the note, or you can actually record an audio file to go with the note. That's unique to Notes. Another big difference you'll notice when you're in the Notes app is that you do not readily see a search option. There's no magnifying glass at the bottom. However, click on the top right ellipsis icon and you'll find the magnifier here as Find in Note. So you see that the Find in Note option inside of a document does a wonderful job of finding words that you have written in addition to the scan document. And that's the beauty of notes, being able to add additional text around the scan document and then find in note option works great for that. So notes is perfect for placing your scanned docs in line with your text notes. So you can have a mix of typed notes, scan documents, photos, audio files, all inside that one single note. And it still has the markup tools if you want to highlight or draw on them. So depending on your use of scan documents, you have three powerful apps in iOS 26 to choose from. So which one are you going to use? Use Preview if you need editing power. Use Files if you like organization or working with multiple folders. Use Notes if you want to incorporate additional information beyond just text, including audio, photos, and note taking. The good news is they're all free, just like subscribing to this channel. And they're built in, and they sync across all your devices. I'd just like to say thank you to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's free to do. And hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, watch this video for some more iPhone tips.